So without any further ado, I want to introduce to you Reverend Jennifer Porter Cox. Amen. All the way from Washington, D.C. Thank you very to Jennifer Porter Ruined 
Yes. Take my time and say this. Amen. I don't care the level or the caliber wreck your life is in. I don't care if it's written off as being taught out by all the forces that be. We are crazy enough to believe a powerful God yeah. and to declare that no matter what it looks like, Almighty God can bring restoration out of every ruined life. I am not saying it because I'm trying to pick up anybody's emotion. I say it because God is unchangeable. He is unshakable. God is yesterday, today, and forever. And if God says it can happen, I don't care who don't believe it. God does not need your opinion or your We have to preach the truth that every ruined life, every train wreck that this world has given upon, you have not yet brought it to Jesus Christ. Every hopeless situation that this world has given upon, it is hopeless because you have not yet brought it to the very throne. Where is God? 
and they thought they were going to die of thirst until Moses struck the rock. You don't know the kind of God that governs this church. They got to Mara, they were thirsty. The water was bitter, but oh God, nobody told them about the branch of healing. Just his branch and he broke it and he threw it into the water. They thought they were going to die of hunger, but the God Thank God. 
we end up living our lives in bondage to something that may never come your path. And you go through life never ever allowing God to break out of you. This was the predicament. This was the predicament that Israel found themselves in on their journey to the promised land. And this is the predicament we will find ourselves in. That was what Nehemiah faced. The first thing they brought against them were words of criticism meant to discourage them for them to give up on the idea of rebuilding the wall. I don't care what the world does. Hallelujah. Reverend, I live in that crazy place you just spoke about. <laughs> where we have people who think they're bigger than God. And they can put laws in place that erase the laws of God. But I am convinced and I am confident. I tell them in the pulpits in the States, and they tell me they soon put me out. I told them I haven't committed any crimes here in Jamaica. So anytime they revoke my passport, I come straight home. No, I, 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 no I, am, I am not worried. I come straight home. But I've told them over and over, I do not care what any government signs into law. I will get up and I will preach this gospel. I will preach the truth of this gospel. In the morning, in the evening, I will preach it on the, cap on the steps of the capital. I will preach it in the open office if they let me come in. I will declare the truth of Almighty God. You can do anything you want to do. Build barricade around God's church.
Not the church of God. And when I say church of God, you know what I mean. Us noisy Pentecostal people. One of the things that we were known for is to make noise. Yeah. People wouldn't even call the church by the name. They would say you're going down to the club and church. Yes. Anybody old enough to remember that? Yes. Then why you are looking at me like yeah. And they said, but no, quiet, never mind. Uh. And, they say, and they say you're going down to the noisy, noisy yeah. church. And nobody had much of anything to say. Anything good about the club and people. We were known to be noisy. And they declared that we are noisy because we are not educated. We are ignorant. So all we do, we go make noise. But God has turned that around now, you see. Nobody can say clap on people not educated or intelligent. Because we have everybody right in here. Here now tonight, now we find out we have doctor. We have them all up in here. And we come in and we clap and I still make noise. So we are not doing it because we are not educated. But we have enough sense when we heard. Redemption gospel when we heard. That there is a remedy for sin when we heard. That the fetters were broken when we heard. That there is life when we heard. And the Holy Ghost pulled us. We said yes. And there is a joy on our inside. And we can't keep it to ourselves. But now the church. My God. Jesus. I'm talking about us. Yes. We, we, Hallelujah. we get liberated yes. oh, socially, economically, and intellectually. Oh, my God. And, and, and it has spilled over into the spiritual realm. Oh, my God. We are now people of certain caliber. Yeah. We, we, we can't make those kind of noises anymore because we run with a different group now. And, 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 and we, don't, we can't have anybody thinking or believing. I need to behave in a certain way. You must have lost your mind. Every day you get up and your fingers and toes can move. You better lift them up and give praise unto the suffering God. Every day you get up and you realize that in spite of everything hell tried, Almighty God blocked it and your life is preserved and your family is protected. You better open your educated mouth and give praise unto Almighty God. You better Let us go. 
friend over. And I'm hoping that everybody who invite me to preach, they get it by now. There's a habit where I come from. Where I live. This is where I come from. That's where I live. There's a habit where I live. You go to churches. They stash you in a little room. Nicely air conditioned. Don't kind of water and juice and a little side table. And a nice little sofa bed and all kind of something. And, and, and they stash you in there. And, and, and tell evangelists when, when you're ready, we will, we will send somebody to get you. Hey. Or they post a card at the door. Nice. And I stick my little head out and let them know when I'm ready to go in. And if you say, but I want to go in now, what is going on now? Oh, no, no, you don't need to rush. It's only praise and worship. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. But, but, but I cannot tell them, you see. Not only when I just get to church, you see, when I step into these things, don't play with me. Amen. Lead me to the king. I don't want to recline in your nice office. I do not want any juice. God bless you for your kindness. Don't post any guard out the door. I don't have anything worth stealing. You don't need to send 15 people to carry me my Bible, not heavy. Show me where the worship is. Let me go where the name of God is being lifted up. Let me go inside so I can give praise unto the most high God. But we have allowed these little nonsense things to come in. And churches are cutie cutie. And friendly friendly like you're playing Dolly House. And dressing up your princess Dolly. And having tea party. No, no, no. It's not time for tea party. It is time. Bible. 
any time the sins of humanity got up into the nostrils of God, the sovereign God moved. And everybody can sit back think, God is not noticing what's going on. Oh no, so the same way he found Moses, but it was time for Egypt and Israel to be delivered. It's the same way right now, God is getting ready to raise up a people to be his voice. Yes, the world is in a mess, but it is God's responsibility. Our responsibility is to be clear that the world does not belong to anybody but God, and he is in control of it. So the spies, so here they are on the threshold of going into what God has ordained for them. And the Bible tells us in the book of Numbers, and you will see with me if I, if I give you the, the, the condensed version. They were on the threshold, and Moses sent out some spies. And God called him, Exodus chapter 3, when he called him and told him he's sending him to bring out the exiles. He told them, he said, the land you are leaving them is a good land. Even before he got to Egypt, you know, God told him, he said, I'm not setting them up to fail. I am sending you to lead them out of bondage. And, and the land they're going to is a good land. It's a land where there will be no lack. They will have everything they need. And, and, and most of us, we know this story that he went in. He went in and he said, who am I going to tell them sent me? He said, you tell them I am. I am. Don't you just love God? He said, I will be what I will be. Whoever you need me to be, whatever you need me to be, according to my will at the right time, that's who I am. Amen. He said, you tell them I am that I am. Yes. And he went and he threw down the rod and Pharaoh did the same thing. But then Moses rod eat up the other ones, all that good stuff, make you tell God, you go God. And eventually, it took the death of the firstborn. And eventually they left Egypt. When somebody has been in bondage for a long time, mm -hmm. accepting freedom yeah. is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. People could unlock your chains 1,500 times. Yeah. I spoke to a gentleman who had come out of prison for 25 years. And he looked me dead in the face. He said, nobody told me life on the outside would be like this. He said, I feel tempted to commit another crime just so that they send me back. Oh, God. After 25 years, he went in at 17. Oh. And after 25 years, he's not, he said, I can't fit. I am free, but I am not free. My chains may be gone, but my mind is still bound. Yeah. Everything that you do is first a thought. If a man changes his mind, he changes his life. Your way of thinking must be revolutionized. And that is why Paul, writing to the church, he said, be transformed. Transform me to change from one state, from one thing completely into something else. He said, by the renewing of your mind. In other words, if your actions are going to be positive, you have to feed your mind positive thoughts so that the negative will come out and then your actions will be positive. You, your mind and you expect good things to come out of your behavior. So even though their chains were loose, they did not realize that they were still free. And before we bash them, it's almost 400 years since anybody called them a people. Most 400 years since anybody told them they could own anything. For the first time, do you know how many gravestones were left in Egypt? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many generations yes. passed right. before this one came out? Right. Do you know the, 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 the psychological weight they came out under? It's a very long time. It is a very long time. And so they came out, they still have issues. And when you look even at Moses, can I just say this? You see all of this preaching and stuff we're going on with? Unless our leaders get it, all of this was a waste of time. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I wish all our pastors were here. Yes. Oh, Pastor Barrett, until this 
becomes real for you as a leader your flock will not benefit from this because your attitude will demonstrate whether or not you believe this look at Moses listen to Moses' language when he spoke to the children of Israel that is why we have been saying all week the success of this rebuilding process rests heavily on the attitude of the leaders there must be unity among the leaders you must be on the same page you must have the same vision you must want the same thing from God you cannot be segregated your congregations will know it and they will reflect what they see in the pulpit if this is going to succeed it begins with us I teach at the Bible school at my church and believe me, it is not a big flamboyant school. It's, it's, it's a little school. It's not in the paid position. We, 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 we do it to build up the lives of lay workers. But some of these men and women go on to a higher place in ministry. So you see, when we are going to teach, we leave home, you know, like it's Sunday morning church, you know, dress like we're going to church. You know. Somebody said to me one day, is that how you dress to go teach? And it's only for the Monday evening. I said, but no, it is not just what I say. We have to lead by example. So if I am trying to instill into individuals excellence of worship and excellence of conduct in the house of the Lord, then I cannot go in there in my gardening clothes. I have to be here in my adorning that they know that I respect God not only by what I say, but in everything about me, God must be honored. Praise him. Praise him. Moving right along to the safety. Come back to the safe place. For those who the Lord has brought into the kingdom this week, their successful growth and their, their, their stability in the kingdom rest heavily in the hands. Heavily in the hands of those who are leading. Listen to Moses. When he was sending out the spies, listen to his language. Moses said, go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains and see what the land is like. What did God tell him from Exodus? Listen, listen to Moses. Moses said, go and see whether the people who dwell in it are they strong or are they weak? What does that have to do with anything? If God already told you it's yours and he already gave you directives, what are you doing your own feasibility study for? Are you telling me that you don't believe God? Listen to his question. Find out if there are few or many. Listen to what he said. He said, see whether the cities they inhabit, are they like camps or are they strongholds? He said, whether the land is rich or poor, whether there are forests or not. And then listen to what Moses said, like he already settled it, that the people must be afraid. He said, be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. I'm not bashing Moses, you know. Can I be honest? It is easier said than done. When you're pulling somebody out of years of bondage, do not be surprised if they seem like they're not quite sure. What troubles me though, that sense of doubt should not come from the leader. If God tell you it is so, even if you have little shaking in your spirit, settle it between you and God in private time, not to the congregation.
situation. And he said to them, he said, I want for you to go see what the land is like. I don't believe in empty emotions. But if we believe God and we say we are accepting what God has given, then our reaction must prove it. I may have told you before, years ago, before my father-in-law passed, I love that old man. I think he's no second on my list. If the Lord should give me a chance, I would ask him to give me back my grandmother and my father-in-law. Just uh, my he was a good man, and he was all of eighty something years old. My husband was very sick, and he kept going to the doctors. And I've told you this before, but I'll tell you again. And Dad said to him one day, he said, "I'm sleeping at your house tonight." And we didn't argue. We picked him up, bring him home, and we sat in the living room. And he decided to pray for his son, my husband. And he, Bishop, he laid hands on him. He said, God, my son is grown. And we are not only brothers in the Lord, he is my son. Yeah. And he said, God, I am yet alive. So he is still under my covenant. Oh, he said, God, you said the promise is for me and my children. So I am alive, so he still come up under me. And he laid hands on him and prayed like nobody's business. And when he finished praying, I said, Amen. We sat there. And he looked at my husband and said, Let me ask you something. Is that how somebody who is healed behaves? When you sit down there looking like nothing has changed. And my God, my husband got up and began giving God praise. And can I tell you something? The glory of God came down in that living room that night. Almighty God touched his body in that house. You may believe me. Hell is going to tell you that you're going to look foolish rejoicing when you don't get it yet but that is not faith faith is the substance now you're holding on to faith until the something come so you open your mouth and you tell God I don't see it yet but I see you and I know you cannot lie if you said it so it is so so I praise you now I celebrate you now if God Those areas, 
and based on my background and you know and, and all my qualifications I really don't see the feasibility of that um we did not quite ask you that that is not the purpose of this gathering well you know I was I traveled last week don't care so God says it can be done if you have nothing positive to say, we won't be upset if you keep quiet. Because the, the report of the ten spies. Do you know what I love about Joshua and Caleb? They didn't even give a report to me. No. They didn't give a report. They said, come on, the land is there, we're going. And when the ten spies gave their report, look at what it did to the entire congregation. In including Moses and Aaron, they fell on their faces to the ground, saying, God, what is this? And then listen to the people. Then listen to the people. They said, let us find a leader and go back to Egypt. He said, let us give up on this thing now based on what was said. You realize what you are up against. If you are going to build up this country for God, you have to have a radical you have to walk your feet set like flint. You have to walk under a covering that you reject every negative word. Not everybody you must allow to speak in your spirit because they are speaking death. But greater are those with us than those who are against the work. It caused the entire congregation. They said, let us go back to the bondage. Oh my God. That we knew. said stop your nonsense he said let us go and fight our battles we have confidence the church will face challenges but don't don't don't, don't give up on us it the church will go through things but don't give up on us it those of you who are just getting saved don't look to man look to God you are not coming into a perfect church. You are coming to a perfect God. Jesus. And it doesn't matter where you are, He will keep you. Yeah. Yeah. The people that's playing fool is not your responsibility. Yeah. Sometimes people think in church we don't see some things, but of course we see them. Yeah. There's not everything we're supposed to create to yeah. rock us over you. You remember in the scriptures when the farmer went out to plant his seeds oh and the enemy went out and planted tears among it. Yeah. And they grew up together and wrap up. And, 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 and they said, the disciples said, should we go in there and pull them out? And Jesus said, you know what tears are? Tears are a winding plant. The nature, the characteristic of a tear is to wind itself around things. It does not stand on its own home. And so it wraps itself around whatever it stands beside. Yes. And so even though you know it is there, it has no use, you know. Yeah. It can't eat, it can't make tea, you know, good for cut, it good for none. Oh but it wraps itself yes. around it. It don't just stand up, it just tight up. Yes. And you cannot remove it without damaging the ear of corn. Yeah. So sometimes there are some things in church, pastors hush, but I have to tell you the truth. There are some things you're going to see in church. And now when you give you head, you have to just leave it alone. Because when you try to move one bad one, they take 15 good ones with them. And you have to trust God to keep them at bay. He said, let the wheat and the tears grow together. Because one day, and the good thing about God and this tear, the tear has the power to wrap around it. But it cannot stop the growth or the maturity of the wheat of mighty God. Give the root enough strength. 
come to be uh, well able. able. Be careful of what comes out of your mouth. Amen. You cannot question and doubt after everything God has said to you. Not only do we have confidence in the power of God, but we have confidence in the process He's taking us through. Amen. Everything we go through yes. is for the glory of God and for the betterment of our lives. Amen. If that incident had not happened, that whole generation would have gone over. But as a result of that carrying on, God had to fix things right there. He said, not to one of you. He said, I'm building up. Somebody said it tonight. Who said it tonight? Pastor Barrett, that we're in a period of transition. And there are some things that Ebenezer must drop off. <laughs> there are some things that cannot function yeah. over in the other place. My God. There are some things that do not have the characteristics yeah. to function effectively yeah. in the land where God yeah. is taking them. They were miserable. Yeah. They still had this slave of mentality. Yeah. And as a result, they don't realize there was enough for everybody. Everybody just grabby, grabby, complain, complain, murmur, murmur, give me, give Everybody just want a piece of the action. It is all about nonsense. And so when they carried on like that, God said, no, no. You're not going anywhere. He said, not one of you except Joshua and Caleb. He said, it is a whole different generation that is going through. Yeah. And right now, I am in a whole heap of trouble. So I may as well just start learning to swim. There comes a time in Christendom, in Christian ministry, in our service for God, in our world, building and managing the world, when we need to know when to step aside. Yes. Jesus. Yes. 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 Praise Him. Amen. 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 There comes a time when we need to learn to pass the mantle. Yes. Yes. That was the first time I came five years ago, six years ago. It means like that some of these were, 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 were peeing you all, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> little, little people. Some of you were 10 and 12. Yeah. And they're the ones now leading worship. And yeah. they're the convention choir this year. No, we have to give room yes. for the transition. Yes. And when God realized that he's dealing with some of us who could kind of forget that church is God's church and it's not, a, and not an heirloom, we don't get to pass it on in the will to anybody. It's God Almighty Church and he get to shift what he wants to shift. Listen to what God said. He said, yes, I am the one who brought all of you up. So you may be one, be the one that God blessed to build the church. You may be the one that put on the front room. You may be the one that buy the paint. It does not mean that you are going to be the one that's going to die in that position. No, sir. It means there comes a time when this Joshua generation must be able to step up because one day we going to drop dead. There must be somebody for God to say, come, my servant Jennifer is dead. You are in step up where she leave off and go preach this gospel. There must be room. And God said, no. With that attitude, you're going nowhere. Yes. Yes. Everybody died in the wilderness. Yes. And it's a whole new generation yes. Yes. that went over. Yes. We must have confidence in the process. Yes. Yes. Cry if you have to. It's a process. Yes. Weep if you have to. It's a process. Yes. Sit down in the dark sometime and talk to God by yourself. It's a process. He's taking you somewhere. Nehemiah went by night and he tell him finish the mistake. Nehemiah went by night to spy out the land. He saw it. Yes. And he knew what was necessary. Yes. Yes. We are well able. Well able. My God, I wish I had time tonight to talk my God. to you about my life. And a lot of your story is way worse than mine. But all I can talk about is my life. Mm. And if God could have picked up my life mm. and turned it around, Against all odds, against all odds, yeah. he found you, he rescued yeah. you against all odds. Yeah. Look at what he has done regardless of what you have been through. Some of you tell your stories, people weep. They can't believe anybody go through all of that and you're still in your right mind. 
around. It is because there is a God in heaven and he changes the times and the seasons. And if you are going through a process, don't curse it and don't curse God. Fast your seatbelt and keep him your best place because he's working on something. Job said, I'm looking for him and I can't find him. But he knows the path that I take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure God. It is a process. You must have confidence Amen. in the process. Praise God. You have to have confidence yes. in the provision of God mm. that he's going to see this work through to the end. Amen. You must have confidence mm. that if God started it, he is going to finish it. Music, get ready, please. Yeah. You must have confidence that if he started it, he is going to finish this. Hear me, God? Don't, 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 don't be too anxious in the benediction. Don't, don't lose me just yet. We must have confidence. When Nehemiah was leaving, what did Cyrus say? Cyrus gave. When Ezra was leaving, Nehemiah was leaving everything they needed for the building of the wall. Yes. God provided it. Hallelujah. When the Israelites were leaving Egypt, and we have to learn from them. Yeah. Look at how God worked things. You they are worrying about, well, I lost my job, and, and this happened, and how I'm going to manage. No, no, no. Look at your God a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. Look at your God a little bit closer. When they were ready to leave Egypt, mm -hmm. what did God say? He said, go to your neighbors. And God is very polite to you. Me now would have to call it what it is. I said, go to those heathens that have new bondage. <laughs> but the Lord just said, go to your neighbors and ask of them. And can I tell you, everybody who was leaving Egypt, where you think Aaron got all of those troubles from? <laughs> to go. You see the trouble we're getting in, and I'm going to say a lot very fast. You know? yeah. He said, go to your neighbors and ask of them. So God allowed them to come out of years of captivity. They had no bank account. Right. Nobody was saving anything from them. Right. But the very people who held them hostage gave them all the jewels and wealth that they could ever manage. So they pick up all their possession, pick up the plate and spoon and everything, plus all the wealth of their enemies. And they headed out of Egypt. You think when God is pulling you out of something, you think he's just going to raise you up and need you to stand up. Can I get very Jamaican? Looking like puppy show. Where people look at you and laugh at you want more now than when you are in Sinosa. Almighty God has a plan. If he tear you down, it's because he planned to build you up. He said, go to your country neighbors. And they came out with more than they can handle. Anybody remember the family of tribes? He said, is he Mighty 
calm. But hear the truth. There was no breath in them. When well, you come in here and you, you, you're getting ready to leave and you come up here, come tell us that we are well able and you're getting ready to go home and I'm quite sure you don't know my life. And mm. I will not apologize. Yeah, I'm telling you about this God. He said they stood up. Yes. All the whole house of Israel. Yes. But there was no breath. It means they look like people. Yeah. But they had no use. Yeah. And God said to Ezekiel, he said, Sarah, I don't do a halfway job. Now prophesy again to the wind. Speak to the east wind. Speak to the west wind. Speak to the north wind. Speak to the south wind. Nuclear wind come forth. Breath come forth. And breathe upon these slaves. And the Bible said that the breath of God came in upon them. Seat, they have no room for your overhead back. And if you like 
me when you're traveling, you have the little things you don't want to get pushed in the overhead. So they're going to have to check it. And I'm passing by this, this aisle, this middle seat. And I said, is that seat taken? The lady said, no. She was sitting by the window. And she got up from the window and jumped over. She was traveling with her husband. And was just sitting at the window to look at the planes until somebody called. So here is a plane packed full. And she get up and jump over. I said, but Jesus. And I, I put my back down on the seat and went to find room for my overhead. The attendant said to me, ma'am, we are out of space. I have to check it. But I'll bring you a ticket for your band. I said, yes, ma'am. And I went and sat in my window seat. My eyes filled up with tears. It's, it's little, you know. It's little something. Yes. You see the next mountain I get to, I'm going to say, but oh, God, if you do seat it, you have dynamite for mountain, you know. If you concerned about me, I sit down and I'll declare a ring to make me a pay. Then you are concerned about my tomorrow. And I'm going to pass down. I see the lady walking up and down, you know. And I said, excuse me, miss. I said, did they tap for my bag? She said, oh, I forgot. I didn't have to check it. I found room for it. It's, 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 it's a little bit I said, but God, look at here. Look at the very plain land that I just sit down. And I said, I'm not even in a hurry. If God find room for my back, everything, and it is simple, but I love to worship for the little things. Because tomorrow morning I might meet a mountain and I'm going to be able to reflect and say, but God, you do see Thank you, God. I'm 
wish somebody would be happy for these two young ladies. Thank you, please. Yes, if I am getting up to do something and you clap for me like that, I would be so perturbed. Can we put our hands together and stand for God for these lives, for these lives in this house tonight? We thank God tonight. Anybody else tonight? Anybody else? If you do not know the Lord, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Sin can only use you and kill you. There is no future in a life of sin. It does not matter how long you have been sitting where you are. Tonight he's saying to you, with my grace, you are more than conquerors. I know there is somebody else for this altar tonight. I know there is somebody else for this altar. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Somebody give me a hymn, please. God bless you. God bless you. Can I have two or four men, please? Pastors, deacons, somebody. To stand with these young men as they come to this altar. Oh, come on, church of God, don't make me get crazy. Never let a soul stand alone at an altar. And if you are saved and the wall is built and you know God, then we need to have a passion for those who are coming into the kingdom. Let nobody stand alone at an altar. Is there anybody else in this house who doesn't yet know the Lord? There are, there are two other young men. Oh, come on, I thought they were coming up here. Anybody else who doesn't know the Lord? Come, young men, don't sit down. I want to pray for you. Come. The two of you who just came in and sat down. Come, come. We want to pray for you right up here. Thank you, sir. Come on. Turn around just in time to see you coming. God bless you. God bless you. We have three young men and another lady. I need some other workers on this altar. Let somebody come to them as they walk up. We are all the saints. We are the saints. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you very much. There's a young lady right here. There she is. Thank you, please, Lady J. Anybody else? Come, come. You come and stand in the ring because I know somebody else coming. Anybody else? Come, Michelle. Come stand close by. Anybody else tonight? We would love to pray for you tonight. We want to pray for you. Somebody else is coming to this altar tonight. Somebody else is coming to this altar. We are believing God tonight. And, 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 and I know most times when we do altar calls, we sing, you know, the song, songs we like to sing. But based on what we are talking about tonight, I want to want us to lift up and hold him. The song says, I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though troubles overtake me along life's weary road, I have somebody. It does not matter what the enemy is going to tell you now that you have started your journey. Sometimes you, you don't have time to get all deep and to go quote scripture because sometimes you, you're like, I, I know it in the Bible, but I can't find it. All you need to know is that you're not alone. And you speak it out of your mouth. You speak it with confidence that we have somebody with us. Anybody is a bit on talk to the church. We're getting ready to go home. But while we lift up this hymn, this is not even so much for those who are just coming in. It is for those of us who hell is telling the wall is too bad, we can't go any further. But we are declaring tonight we are well able. Why? Because I have somebody with me. I am not doing this alone. I have somebody walking with me. Yes, yes. The bishop going to help us sing this song. We are declaring tonight in the name of Jesus. My God, somebody said it last night. I wish you could feel the passion on my inside. I believe every word of God tonight with every fiber of my being. We silence every negative report. Everyone that wants to go back to Egypt, we cancel that tonight in Jesus' name. The land is ahead of us. And we are well able. So we are going up at once to take it. While these on this altar, please minister to those you are standing with. Begin to minister, begin to pray for as we lift up this song tonight before them. I have somebody with me to share my 